to me, that day is the Conor McGregor fight. It was so, I mean, at the end of the trial, we had like a murder trial. I'm talking all his people that were there. I'm out on bond on felony assault because of who I am. I'm a weapon. That's the. That's well, how long were you in jail? And I'm like, take a deep breath. It's your lucky day. Of course, this guy's like, ooh, I bet it's my lucky day, <laughs> right? Like, ooh. We got in the house, Mr. Cowboy, Donald Cowboy Cerrone. He's uh, here to learn how to ride bulls and punch fools. I got the punching fools. You got the punching fools down. Got the punching fools. Yeah. Down. He's going to actually teach us how to punch fools tomorrow morning. We're going to do some rolling. We're trying to teach him the riding bulls part, uh, which has been, we, we went to JB's yesterday and we did, uh, went to the beaches today. The beaches are much softer. Yeah. Could be the way I was landing like a cat. Yeah. Ours, what? ours is a little sandier than JB's. Uh, Bucktown's got, Little bit of that clay to it. You got on a bull for the first time. Several. You've been on seven bulls, actually. Seven. Let's talk about that first. Why are you getting on bulls at all? Well, I'm trying to ride a twisted steel with Dana White, my old boss's bull. I was at the rodeo and I thought, hey, yeah, it looks like something I'd want to try. I think I could ride that one. So this was your idea? It was like a 50 50. Yeah. It was the diarrhea of my mouth getting my ass check that I can't cash kind of deal happened. I got you. But I'm here taking out withdrawals now so I can cash it later. I got you. Right. So we'll did see. it did it happen at that event that you came up with the idea or what had it been brewing? It had been brewing. Well, I'm doing it for kids camp. So I finally secured the days for kid camp, and then I'm like, man, kids camp cost me roughly forty to sixty thousand out of my own bank account every every time every year. Right. What could I do? To I was thinking about challenging him. You know what I mean? I was gonna think about like, uh, I'll ride your bull for X amount. Like that was yeah. And then I just decided to say I'd like to ride your bull, and then he just decided to be like, well, shit, I'll give you money, and I was like. Well, that worked without me even having to ask for it. Right. So. Yeah. Yeah. So you, uh, so if you get on the bull, you get 50,000. 100. I thought it was if you get on yeah, it. He's just going to give 100. You think so? Yeah. He you is. just know him? I just know him. He's, this is who he is. You know, he's a, people like to talk badly about him and how he doesn't pay his fighters enough. And number one, the UFC is a machine. If you're not, part of the machine and you're not doing your job in the machine, you get spit out. And I get that. If you're part of the machine and you're oiling it and keeping it greased and you're rolling with the machine, you're taken care of. Yeah. So all these guys that are coming in, they're like, we need, they're only starting me at 12 and 12. And I want to re remind them that $24,000 is a lot of money. Right. When I first started, it was $800 I made. So, probably my twelfth, thirteenth fight, I made twelve grand. Yeah. When the UFC absorbed the WC and I came over, I think I was at twelve and twelve or something, something like that, some small. And for those out there that don't know what twelve and twelve means, you want me to explain, explain it to us? Okay. <clears throat> yeah, sorry, I'm talking to everyone like I know exactly. For for what I'm talking about, the UFC. Um, WC is another organization that used to be around, but the UFC bought it and absorbed it and made it part. Uh, basically, how it started is WC had a, the the lower weight classes, uh -huh. right? The 35, 45, and 55, where the UFC at the time did not. Okay. Like the Frankie yeah. Edgars of the world, the champ, he was champ at 55, but really he's a 35er. Mm -hmm. So, um, gave a, a, but you make X amount of dollars to show up and fight, and you make X amount of dollars to win the fight. So 12 and 12, you get $12,000 to show up, and then you get another $12,000 to win the fight. To win it. Losing is just a, a nothing. A have a nice gotcha. day. Yeah, it's, they like to pour salt in the wound, if you will. Uh huh. Well, you got your ass kicked. Well, here's no money. Have a ride. We'll get you a bus ride home. Yeah. 
So talking to these kids about, for one, they think that just because they somehow made it to the UFC that they deserve fame and fortune. And I'd like to remind these kids again, you're in it for the wrong reasons if that's what you're chasing, yeah. young buck. If fame and fortune is all you're looking for, then this isn't maybe maybe you should be a rapper. Right. Yeah. So um I made a name for fighting anyone anywhere we were talking about. I think Donnie and I were talking about it today, maybe about I always wanted to fight the guys that nobody wanted to fight. Yeah. That's what I'm here for. I don't care. I just want the date. I want May 18th is the day I have. Now I know. Cool. And they'd always ask me, like, you don't care who? I'm like, yeah, I'll figure it out and let me know. I don't care who. Yeah. who's across from me. That's that's just my mindset with everything. And, yeah. Uh, so this well-oiled machine, these guys are bitching and playing. First of all, sell a pay-per-view out. Get it to where you're a household name. Yeah. Right? You're Dale Brisby. People know you by that. Right. And you, they're like, oh, Dale's fighting? I'm watching. Yep. Okay, now it's time to go to UFC. Like, hey, I move the needle. For sure. I would like to maybe up my pay. And and, and then Dana White, being the stud he is, would be like, okay, you're right. So my first fight when I came over from WC to UFC, I had made a name for myself in the WC. I didn't even have to say those words. Showed my first fight, get my check. It's supposed to be 12 and 12. Somehow it's 36 and 36. Yeah. Right? Oh, shit. Hey, I think um, you guys made a mistake. I got, like, double paid. No, 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 that's your new contract. It's, we're going from here up. That will last for a couple of fights and then doubled it again. Um, Probably the coolest moment to me was before um, the company they sold, the UFC sold for $4.3 billion dollars. Yeah, Dana and the Fertitta brothers used to come into the back. If Dale Brizzy went out there and you you and I put on one hell of a fight, you, you're going to get a, a bonus, like a performance of the night bonus, a submission of the night bonus, a knockout of the night bonus. Right. My very first time bonusing, I double bonused. So now the bonuses are set at 75, 65, 55,000 kind of is where, where they're at. Well, then there was no limit. There was no number. It was... Yeah. A hundred grand. So I made a hundred thousand twice. And then when I got home, I had another discretionary bonus for 80,000. And I was like, whoo. And those are just the bonuses. Those aren't the the normal pay. Yeah, but the pay was 40 and 40 or 38, yeah, yeah. 30, right? So the money I made, I made way more in bonuses. So in my career, I think I made like, I don't know, 2.8 million in bonuses was the overall number that, yeah. uh, a lot of bonus. I still hold the record for most bonuses. Yeah. But that's just the style I had stylistically. When you don't care who's apart across from you, you just go fight. And I never surf and navigated my way through my career. Like, I'm not going to fight Donnie because if I fight Donnie, I might lose. Then I won't fight Dale. And Dale's the money fight. Come on, Donnie. Let's go. Yeah. Come on, Dale. Let's go. Yeah. And that was just always added to it, which is why I think I had the fans that I had is because I was always willing to just bear down and go fight. Yeah. It's the same thing. J same reputation, reputation JB had with, uh, with bull riding. Yeah. Oh, you're not going to ride him. Yeah. Bring him on. I'll get on him. Yeah. Yeah. That was, watch that was, this. That was always the, uh, that was always what JB wanted. He wanted the one that nobody wanted to ride because, you know, JB picked Bushwhacker 13 times, Yeah, you know, and because you there's a there's a draft there's a point in that weekend sure. when you pick your own bull and anyhow picked him over and over and a lot of times guys might pick a bull that they thought they can score on right i don't want him because i won't score i'm gonna play it safe and get this one that i know i can score on yeah well that's not cool so who's 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 the cowboy of today in the ufc i don't know it's a yeah. good question. They all play the game now. It's crazy. All chasing the title, which everyone wants. So they all play the game of, I'm not going to fight him, or I need more time, or I don't yeah. know, man. It's just it's a, it's a crazy, crazy game. There's been a couple times I've been there talking with the matchmakers. I'm like, what do you mean you're giving him an option? But they'd always call me whenever I'd ask for a fight, and they'd be like, we have yet, 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 yet. 
Yeah. Who who makes the most sense? I don't care. What day do you want? Sick. Whoever you want, go ahead. Don't make a shit of me. Yeah. But for someone to be like both sides of the party have to agree on a fight, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm, so the sure. matchmaker called Dale Brizzy, hey Cowboy, March eighth. And you're like, mm, March eighth doesn't work for us. So we're having shoulder surgery. Can we do this? And I'll be like, No, I want March eighth. Find me somebody else. Gotcha. Right? Yeah. I didn't care. But other guys are like, Oh, he can't go till June. Yeah, all right, we'll wait. Shit like that. So gay. Yeah. But um those are the ways the days of the athletes that fighters that are became athletes are are dying and the days that are athletes are that are trying to be fighters are 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 immersing, if that makes any sense to you. Absolutely, because like in bull riding, you know, there's a lot of man, there's a lot of people in the sport especially with rough stock, like you saw us today. We buck Bronx and mm-hmm. we buck bulls. There's also bareback and bullfighting. Um, there's a lot of people that like to call themselves a bull rider, sure. but they don't necessarily like to ride bulls. So they like to have ridden the bull. So you want to be a cowboy until it's time to do cowboy shit. So <laughs> they like to have the title of a UFC fighter, but they don't like between the bells. Sure. And I... I get the vibe from you that you were you're the same kind of you're that kind of bull rider that like no cameras, no nothing, no like yeah. you like the actual fight itself. Yes. Which I think is what makes a man more dangerous. Like today I got very upset with myself because I felt myself curring up. And it, I hate that. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, I, I it drives me crazy having like self doubt in myself. I've made a long career of, of I didn't like the way I kicked with my left leg. So I spent 10,000 hours kicking with my left leg. You know, whenever was something I didn't like or something I would do, it would never happen again. Mm-hmm. Got tired in a fight. Well, never, I'm never getting tired again. That shit ain't happening. Mm-hmm. So today, like just when I'm my body, when the inner bitch in me took over, it like really, it like hurt my ego. And I was like, Ooh, that won that month again. We're yeah. Right. Yeah. I think that's a good indicator of, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Like, you enjoy the actual fight, you know, like the challenge of it and overcoming just the the chess game that is actual mixed martial arts and all that goes into jujitsu and striking. life, anything. Somebody's nightmare is a dream come true for me. Mm -hmm. Exactly, (laughs) yeah. Right? Like That's it. Yeah, like we go to the gas station and someone's robbing it i'm like oh hell yeah like to me right right like oh yes <laughs> right so, right exactly um and that's just the sickness in my brain i think but well you're self-aware enough to know that like this is what i enjoy so i'm gonna go in that direction with right. life and you've had 25 plus years yeah fighting and um that's what i think makes a good bull rider sure somebody that Loves the actual fight of it because there's a lot of guys that just they like to be called a bull rider, yeah, but they don't necessarily like to be on the back of the bull actually. And and I think that's that's something that's going to set anybody apart who is going to be successful in the sport. And I'm just to be clear, I'm only a bull rider for a few months, then I will no longer be a bull rider. You've been on seven now. What, but like, what are the similarities between getting being on the back of the bull during that eight to 10 seconds to having fists flying at you during the, I think preparation, being prepared for the, for the, the day is what, and I, and you know, making videos, making rides, everything you've done in your life, preparation is 99% of like with a fight. If you come in, unprepared you're going to fail i think what we're doing right now getting prepared for may 18th is is the best thing we can do so when i go in there and we nod i know we've done everything dotted all the i's crossed all the t's and then it's just what happens happens you know it wasn't because i wasn't prepared enough for it and i think that on the side of the similarity for fighting same thing like you have to put in the time put in the work and 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 get it done now Fight night, ride night, I think the similarities come down to I don't care 
what 99 point ride just happened in front of me, right? Or what, whatever score is going to take the money. I'm not worried about that. I'm not worried about the, the rides. Oh man, JB's riding after me. If I don't do good, he's probably going to win the buckle, right? Like I, yeah. I don't need to think like that. I need to think of, same thing with the fighting. I never would be watching the fights on the, on the show. Cause you could see them. They have them in the TVs in the rooms. I would never be like, Oh man, they, they just got fight of the night. Damn. Now I got to go out there. No, I'm like, hell yeah. Now I get to go out there and fight even harder. Watch right. this. Yeah. And so I never, I never let any of what happened before what's happening after worry dictate what's going to go on in the, in the moments to come. So that similarity, I think I can, I can rel- relay or, or let's say Donnie gets on that, um, horse and gets knocked out. I can't let that happen. That's not my eight seconds. I can't yeah, let yeah, that. Yeah. Like right like, before you. Right before me. I can't be like, oh, no. Yeah, that's not your fight. That's not my fight. Yeah. So, and that can happen. Especially sure. like, you know, if you were to go to a practice pen or a rodeo, you know, there's going to be a stock contractor show up and he's going to have a bunch of bulls or horses. And you're just kind of wondering, how are the horses going to buck tonight? And the first three, Are'd you know, the guys get dusted. Yeah. You know, that's a good way to put it. That's not my fight. That's not my bull ride bronc ride yep. uh yep. because i could see like i mean did you have to work at controlling your mind like that over the 25 years or did no. that something that came naturally i think it just came naturally i just never i don't know how to explain that how i just one day clicked the switch and figured that out but i just never i kind of have like a don't care attitude most of the time anyway so i never really gave a shit what they was doing in front of me or behind me. I was always kind of worried about what I had to go out there and do. And I think, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. What do you think Dana would say if, like, just like, what, what does Dana think of you? Like oh, watching you fight. Like, I know he's obviously a fan of you, but like specifically, do you think like, I mean, cause he seems like a fighter himself. Like he's probably got a lot of respect for, and he does, and that's why with the racing side, with everything I do, he's 100% on board with everything I got going on, you know? And just because he's a fan of who I am and what I stand for, I've never... When he called and I took would answer the phone, I would never pull out because of a fake injury. I'd never pull out because of a real injury. I would just go, May 18th, I'll be the same thing with this bull ride. Yeah. May 18th, no matter if I'm dislocated shoulder, I mean, I'd have to damn near be dead to not, Right, the nod. I'm gonna do it because I said it, and that's. I think just my grandparents raising me, teaching me, never paying myself in a corner, and always do what the hell you're gonna say is always yeah. resonated in my life and everything I do. Yeah. So if I say I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna do it. What uh, where'd the idea for kids camp come from? So my grandparents raised me, and my parents um didn't right. They were kind of not really in my in my life. But the one thing that my dad used to always tell me is I'm a promoter. It's always good at getting people to do dumb things. Yeah. Very good at it. I could round up this whole room right now and go get us to break into that hotel down there and spend the night. Right? right. Yeah. Really good at that. The the baker. Yeah, he's ready. The baker. <laughs> yeah. So my dad would always to ask me, cowboy. Why don't you use your powers for good instead of evil? Yeah. And I got this platform and was able to finally use them for good. Mm. And that's what I decided to do. I said, man, I should put on, I just see all these kids and the way people raise their kids and how the, the single parent generation we're in right now. Mm-hmm. And dads, they just aren't there to teach them. And, or maybe they are, or maybe the dad themselves doesn't know. Right. So I just thought, man, let's put a let's put a kids camp on here and teach these kids how to operate a firearm safely, how to change a tire. And remember, big old West, the guy who wore the cowboy hat. Uh-huh. His dad called me about three months ago, ecstatic, telling me West called him, said, "Dad, I'm gonna be late. Uh, I'm out on a date with my girlfriend. My girlfriend's mom tire flat. I'm headed over there right now to change it." And, yeah. And the dad said, "Need me to help you?" So I got it, Dad. Yeah. To me, that's cool. Right. Hell yeah. Wes, yeah. good job. Yeah. So, I mean, just like we talk about at kids camp, like you don't want to be in a car on a date 
have something happen with your car and have to call another man to come take care of your problem. Yeah, change your tire. To do jump start you, change your tire, fix whatever that it might be. Like yeah. How oh God, I'd just be sick to my stomach. I couldn't right. imagine that. So uh the camp idea was like let's let's just let's create a, a, a place where we can have fun and sh- teach the next generation and do this. And you did it last year. You there's so much growth in it. Like you, you're like, wow, this is meaningful. It's cool. Uh huh. Is this this coming summer will be number four, five, number five, five. Yeah, number five. One we don't really count because we were totally unorganized and didn't know what. I mean, it was just mostly a lot of my friends' kids and like we kind of just tried yeah. it. Um, but yeah, so four realistically uh-huh. but number five is the real number but uh and this will be the first year i mean especially with this with dana and um everyone who was helping out i get to build the dorms and yeah everyone's like oh you're gonna what are you gonna do with 100 grand well i'm building like a two hundred fifty thousand dollar building to house these kids bathroom showers you know what i mean so it's all right it's not like i'm just putting it in my pocket like hell yeah going to buy a truck yeah like, no i'm gonna put 100 percent of it back into the kids and like you know, that's that's a passion I have. I, I enjoy it. I really do. Well, you're it's already your whole place is kind of starting to gear towards kids camp, you right. know. And some of it you get to use in the off season, but yeah. there's a lot of aspects of your of the BMF ranch that like are tailored to kids camp. Sure. And I don't know. It's not like you're gonna these might be the only week or two that this that those buildings are used. For sure. You know what I mean? Like it's yeah. not Hopefully you find another use for them throughout the year, but maybe not. Like it's for the kids camp. It's going to be hard. I mean, other than having some kind of hosting a party or something like I'm going to have these giant buildings that have three stacked bunk beds in them all as far as you can see. So I don't know how you move them. They're going to have lockers. Yeah. You know what I mean? They're all yeah, going to have, yeah. so I don't know what I'd do with the giant bunk. I don't mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Airbnb. Yeah. <laughs> come say hi to your neighbor. Come stay at the Cowboy B&B. Yeah. The B&B. yeah. I mean, that's an idea. Yeah. yeah. Uh, except for you don't get your own house. It's a, it's a group. Yeah, it's yeah, like yeah. A tent There's setting. a family in this corner, yeah. family in that corner. Yeah. What was... So this is day two of a day three buck out here. Which and, should have been day one only. I sure wish... So if anybody's thinking about starting to be a bull rider overnight, I'll do it in one day increments because... You're not ready for it. You're. I'm a professional athlete that trains, and I'm like whipped. Yeah, yeah. My back's sore. My arms are tired. My little chicken bobblehead's tired. I'm getting just whiplash banged around. My groin's pulled. So, um, you didn't think it was going to be like that? No. When I watched the professional bull riders that I imagined in my head that I was going to be exactly like, they ride it flawlessly. They look good. Yeah. Yeah. The um, embarrassing. You know, it's like. When people do the Instagram picture and it's uh-huh. uh, the reality against the right, <laughs> yeah, that's 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 the analogy I'm giving. I in my mind, I thought I was going to be uh, Chase Outlaw, right, and that was not the case. Do you find that there's probably a lot of people out there that think the same thing about fighting yeah, professional the, fighters? Oh God, I think there's a million people out there. I could take him. Oh, for well, for one, you got the guys that sit on their couch and try and explain to me what I should have done. You have, <laughs> right? You got you have those guys that have never stepped foot in a gym ever and what you should be doing, those guys. Yeah. And then you got the next tier of guys that have maybe taken a couple classes uh-huh. and they are the maybe the town tough guy and they think that they are the cat's meow, you know what I mean? And then you actually have the fighter that really knows what he's doing, and he's just right on, on beneath where we're at. And then you got the, the, the real guys. And it's funny on all walks of life because in a gym scenario, you have the guys that are just learning and you have the guys that are just under you. And the guys that are just learning and the guys that are just under you, which I'm sure you have in the rodeo world, they like to talk a lot. And I always constantly, when I was training, have to remind them, listen, you know how I know you're not good? Because you talk about yourself like right. you're good. When somebody talks about themselves being good, they're not usually that good. That's but what when, I've always said. When somebody else says that guy's good, 
they're usually pretty good. Like yeah. if, when someone walks in, like, oh shit, that's JB. And I'm like, who's JB? And they're like, oh, you don't know who JB Mooney is? Oh, he's like the best. Yeah. And so the people that don't talk about themselves usually they are. So we that's, get, that's, that usually I, I, I don't have to tell people I'm the greatest of all time. Yeah. They, they know. They just know. Yeah. Or if someone tells them. You Correct. Know? And if they don't know, I guarantee you their mom does. That's probably very true. Is it all the time? That I mean, when you're when you're in the UFC, like obviously, like it's frowned upon for you to fight outside of the ring. But mm-hmm. like, how often did you feel people trying to test all you? all the time? For some reason, when I was in the UFC, all the time. And now that I'm free, never. Yeah. Now that I have the opportunity, to, maybe because my demeanor and 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 vibe has changed. Like if we were at the gas station or parking lot, and someone pulled up wanting some shit. Who? Yeah. Like just the other day. I had a trying to get over and there was a cop next to me and the guy wouldn't let me over. So I just rolled down my window, started talking shit to him. And then I got off my truck and the cop pulled up and he's like, is there a problem? And I had to say, yeah, this punk bitch won't let me out. I'm over. I'm about to whip his ass. Right. Like I didn't care. Yeah. But, um, yeah. So, <laughs> like I didn't even know that like, I didn't care. I was, I mean, I was so road raged about to just lose my mind and, now I can't. I can't get. I won't get in any trouble. I mean, I'm still like criminally could probably get in trouble, but not by the UFC. Like when you're in the UFC, if you get in trouble fighting, you're cut, done. Yeah. So now I would just have to face the repercussions of the law, which I don't care. I mean, I'll just deal with it. Yeah, that's what people don't understand. Like I'll go to jail for whipping your ass if you put. I, just so you know. Yeah. If you cut me off and don't let me in, and you want to roll your window and talk shit when I run over to you, you put your window up like a little scared girl. Yeah, I'm coming from the street and blowing the window out. Yeah, <laughs> for sure, and dragging you out, and and then we're going, and then I'm going to jail. But I don't. I'm, Haven't you done that before? Oh yeah, one time, many years ago, um, this guy I used to ride motorcycles, and we were out riding around, and guy cut us off like a whole group of us, and so we chasing down, and he pulled like pull tells me pull over, and I'm like. Hell yeah. <laughs> so I pull over. And I go walking up to his Jeep. This son of a bitch had a soft Jeep and zip, 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 zip and zips his Jeep window shut. Yeah, so I just I just hawk back and throttle punched right through the plastic, blew his ass right through the window. That's hilarious. Yeah, but I was like, oh, you gonna you putting the zip up on me? You put nah. the zip up. <laughs> no. It's so tough. <laughs> zip, yeah, zip. It's like I'm protected now. Oh, hell yeah, nah. Did he not realize, like, I, I want to see the demeanor in his, it just changed, like, when he realized, like, who he, like, told to pull over. I don't, th- no, I don't think he knew at that point. Um, yeah, I don't think he, I mean, he knew I was coming to whip his ass. Yeah. But, and then he, he, he didn't know, he didn't realize who you were. No, nah, no, 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 not until after he, I don't even think after he got punched in the mouth and had a bloody nose and a hole in his window, he knew, but. Yeah. Yeah, he just got one punch. That was all. I didn't end up pulling him out and whipping his ass. But, um, have you ever had to like use any sort of like jujitsu on anybody? Ah, uh, I mean, just well, the time at a at that fight I was telling you about. I carried the guy, used the guy as a. You're in the basement. In of a, a basement of a house party. Yeah. In another town that I knew nobody. It was just me and my buddies, and. It was like a high school party, so the whole other high school was at this house. And were you in high school? Yes, yes. And you already knew a little bit about jujitsu. No, I knew nothing. I just you're asking me if I've ever used. Yeah, 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 yeah. I knew what a guillotine was. Yeah. So they come to us like you need to leave. I'm like, yeah, no problem. Whatever. Like we didn't. We probably bowed up a little bit more than that. But I seen the in any kind of setting when there's confrontation, it usually swells back and the fight circle kind of creates and you can kind of see who's with who. Well, it was just me and my friends and everybody else was not. They were, it was about to go downtown Charlie Brown. So I remember I just quick punched the guy, grabbed his head and put him in a guillotine. So his head, back of his head was here and I had my arm under his throat. Yeah. And I was lifting him up off the ground, like basically strangling him if you will but i used him as a escape goat letting them know i'm gonna kill this dude yeah yeah i'm gonna choke him i said he's got about six seconds to go out and then probably another six seconds and he's gonna die if you don't let me out of here 
Yeah. You know? So I'd choke him to where the point where his toes would start dragging. He'd like be grabbing at my hips and then I'd set him down a little bit and I'm like, you guys think I'm playing. And so I had to walk up the stairs through the house and to the front door. So you felt like it was about to be 17 on two. Probably more than that. Yeah. There's three of us, but yeah. Yeah. It's about to go down. And then that was that we got out of there. Good. And then me and my buddies started training kickboxing. Yeah. And like everybody else thought we were the toughest punks in the town. So now when we go to these fights, instead of thinking, Hey, let's get out of here without starting any problems. We go the other direction and say, all right, let's throw down. So what we used to tell people, like if I was with you, Dale, and shit was about to hit the fan, I would say, Dale, go lock that front door. And I'd have you go up there and deadbolt the front door and stand by it, and we would just clean house. Yeah. <laughs> so that was uh, the younger, way younger me when I was yeah. just a rotten punk. Um, a lot has changed in my life. But road rage still to this day will get me. Fired yeah, up. it takes a, and even in the UC, it would take a lot to to get me to fight. People just think like I have a short fuse and snap, but it it would to get to that point of where I see red. Yeah, yeah, and I remember we were coming back from that K and M deal, and we, me and you, were sitting in the airport, and you showed me a video on your phone, and I showed you a video on my phone, and then that guy behind us was like, "I don't. What did he call us?" Oh, something like despicable. Uh, yeah, I forgot about. But that. he was essentially mad because we were on our phones and he could hear it. Yeah, I've not really ever thought. I mean, like we're in a damn airport. Like there's people everywhere, everywhere. Yeah, talking it's like, loud. It's not like we're in a library, you know, or on the plane, or even on the plane. <laughs> and uh, he goes like, he said something like, "You guys are essentially." He was calling us rude. But yeah. it was like a little more like punk ass or something. But it was this guy was maybe sixty five, little overweight, and cowboy turned around and said, "Bitch, I will, I will, <laughs> bitch, I'll whip your ass right here in this airport. I don't give a shit." Is what you said. <laughs> and he went and he just like darted off, and you were like, "Where are you going?" or something like that. And uh, immediately. I I just he just didn't expect anybody to battle back. <laughs> that was my first glimpse of this is no this is the retired yeah. cowboy Cerrone. Yeah, snap. Yeah, none yeah. of that's happened since you retired though. Man, so get this story. Okay, so hopefully these people like listening to old cowboy stories. But I got in a fight and got a uh, felony assault in the UFC. Dang. Dana, first person I call is Dana White. Dana, let me, before this gets out on <laughs> TMZ and all the media outlets, I need to tell you, we'll call them, he was my first call from jail. What's happening? Dana hung up and said, I'll, I'll have someone call you right now. Hired me the most amazing OJ Simpson five attorney, right? Yeah. I mean, he had yeah, it was it was pretty impressive uh, for the small town of Granby, Colorado. And long story long, I we got an altercation on a boat. Yeah. Um and it wasn't until my I had fourteen UFC fighters with me. Fourteen Dang. on this boat. All of them rowdy, ready to go with this dude because all weekend, this guy kept trying and trying and trying and like pursuing us, pursuing us. And um, we go out, my wakeboarding boat. If anybody you all know about a wakeboarding boat, you got to like let the ballast tanks fill up so you kind of, we're sitting there. Well, here comes this guy. One more chance to get rowdy with us. Comes flying in. Let's go to the steering wheel and let's go to the gas and runs to the front of his he has a ski do boat, like a jet uh -huh. ski boat kind of runs to the front of it. And he's like, which one of you pussies wants some shit and flexes his muscles. Mind you, no one's running the gas or the steering wheel. He's headed straight towards my boat. His boat binks into the side of my boat, straight on team bones me and bounces off. And I'm like, Oh my God, you just slammed into my boat. Mother right. I'm pissed. 
And he goes, what? Shit, I'm about to do it again. Takes off and turns around. And my buddy, Cody Donovan, uh, 205 uh, UFC fighter, he's like, oh, he's he's coming back. He's coming back. Well, I go to pin it. I have 5,000 pounds of ballast filled up on my tank. So we're like, like a tank, just like, <laughs> like dragon. Like, oh, no. Now, had I not been so mad, I would have congratulated this guy for the most epic wall of water you could possibly throw on somebody. Before he hits me this time, he throws the old stank leg and blows water. I mean, people's cell phones were floating. Dang. Three feet of water in my boat. Wow. I would have been like, I would have been like, that was good. But <laughs> I'm enraged. And I'm trying to be cool. I'm not, I'm, I'm not saying anything to do. I'm letting everybody else. And then my wife stands up and she's like, that's it. And I said, that's all you had to say. Whoop, straight to the straight to the beach. <laughs> right? That's all you had to say, babe. Got it. <laughs> so fight happens, head kick him. He's out. He's out. Called the cops. Cops show up. He called the cops. He called the cops. Immediately. Saying that I assaulted him. And I'm in the wrong, and I embarrassed him in front of his friends. And I was like, good, call the cops all weekend even at me, and you're wasted drunk. Cops get there, telling him this clown is drunk out of his mind. Now, again, this witty son of a bitch tells the cops, I ain't drunk. I just started drinking because he kicked me and made me look stupid in front of my friends. I emotionally didn't know how to take it. Yeah. Dang. I said... <laughs> Ooh, good, good. All right. Better than the water. Yes. Yeah, that's, that's two, <laughs> that's two, two for you, zero for cowboy. Got it. Okay. So you're on a roll. I get taken to jail. Call Dana. Do you think he had that planned from I the beginning? I don't know. I have no idea. It was so, I mean, at the end of the trial, we had like a murder trial. I'm talking all his people that were there. So when we hit the beaches of Normandy and we were off loading this boat, <laughs> all his guys are there he has like a like a, it's like a fourth of july weekend it was like a big week memorial day so i don't remember the what what it was but they had 15 people we come storming the gates all the guys on my boat are at this point ready to rock and roll yeah they were like no 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 <laughs> just that, that just that just guy. That. <laughs> he's still out on the boat he's still out on the boat at this time so he has to come back in so he don't probably get his ass would have been tell everything's calm down on the beach and he comes back in. Yeah. And then he, it's me and Lindsay, because she's pissed off. And my best friend, Mikey. This guy, Mikey's teeny tiny, little redhead. Guy comes beadlining for me and I'm like, hell yeah. Grabs Mikey by the shirt. Damn. Pulls him in close to him and then sneaker tries to hit me. Wow. Number three, good job. Yeah. <laughs> I've seen the bar room right hand okie doke a million times. So when he throws right hand, I slip off head kick. That was that. And then it was over? Yeah. And <laughs> I sat down next to him and gave him some backhands because I was so pissed off. And Mike had to tell me to stop. But like I literally sat next to him like, <sighs> like this, right? There's not much power, like a little weak backhand. But I was, I wanted to just gorilla maul him. Yeah. I didn't. Calls the cops. They come go to jail two and a half years this took two and a half years fast forward i don't know eight months i'm out on bond on felony assault because of who i am i'm a weapon that's the that's well how long were you in jail overnight like oh yeah it, okay Dana, so, yeah, took, yeah, yeah 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 you're out out yeah i wasn't in jail yet but felony assault is serious jail time right um walking across the street at whole foods on my phone. Going across the crosswalk. Guy honk. Yee. All right. Walk into my car. Put the code in my car. This guy comes running over. What's up, mother? Bam. Blows my glasses off my face. My ears are ringing and I'm boiling. And my wife's there. and She's like, no, please. Please, no. Damn. Please. Like, cause I'm in trial for assault right now. Damn. Just get smoked, smoked across my, blew my glass off. Bro, I'm hot. Did he know who you were? I have no idea. Still to this day, don't know. 
right? And I'm like, and she's, she steps in front in between me and him, like, don't, please don't. And I'm like, take a deep breath. It's your lucky day. Of course, this guy's like, ooh, I bet it's my lucky day, right? Like, ooh, ooh. Yeah. Like, he's, ah, bro. Oh, God. he's like, you're a little bitch. Oh, That's man. not my lucky day. Oh, man. Just the way he, I still can see it in my night. Ooh, I bet it's my lucky day, oh, bro. <laughs> he oh, actually said that? Oh, yeah. He just chirped, chirped back to me like, moo, moo, right? Oh, man. I'm like, she's like, please don't. Please. Like, she like, cop. And I tell him, she can, I can take one from you. I can't take two. You hit me again, I'm going to kill you. And I think that, like, the way I said it to him kind of maybe resonated to him. Because yeah. he just turned around and went off. It's like the end of it. So I don't know how, where it came from, how it started. All I know is he broke my glasses. I got smoked in the face. And then I got made fun of for telling him it was his lucky day. So I had to get in the car, even when I driving home, I kept going, hey, you're lucky, dude. Like, you know what I mean? Like, it's just like, <laughs> I was so, I was so mad. And, um, so yeah, that I've had several instances of it happening while being in fire, but not, not anything other than that moment with you afterwards. <laughs> Dana still gives you a hard time about it. No, he never gave me a hard time, but every time I'd go to renegotiate for more money, he would. Let me remind you of the. <laughs> let me, let's just slide this paperwork over here and let me remind you what. Uh, uh, you're right. You're right. It was uh, it was very expensive, you know, and we ended up uh, getting not guilty. And the judge also got disbarred. Dang. Yeah, because it's a small town, very small town, kind of like what's this town called? Uh, Winnebago. Winnebago. So it'd be like a little bigger in Winnebago, but let's just say Dale Brisby knows the judge. Ju Dale Brisby's yeah. dad is friends with the judge. Yeah. And you're the person I got in trouble with. That's kind of what was going on in that town. Yeah. Every time I'd go to stop, say something in the trial or my lawyer, it, we'd get overruled. Couldn't oh, talk. Dang. Yeah, like, no, no, no. So they hired some private investigators and found out that the caught the judge and the guy's dad drinking at the bar. Dang. So after the trial, we won. I mean, we did a trial, and they all, the whole town knew the guy, and they were all knew he was a prick, and all the guy's friends turned on him and told our side of the story. It was like, yeah, that's not at all what happened. Like, he yeah, was right, you know. So we ended up uh, getting not guilty, and judge got disbarred, and didn't have to pay. He was coming after me for money. That's what it all came down to. Like the for guy, sure. Yeah, two hundred fifty thousand dollars is what he wanted. He ended up getting zero. So yeah, but it took two and a half years of my life, literally. Did uh, so you couldn't fight during it? I could fight. I just, I just mean like it was in Granby, Colorado. I lived in New Mexico. It's a twelve hour drive. So any of you that have ever been to court, besides a speeding ticket, you even a speeding ticket, you know, you go in there and they ask you what, what do you want? Well, first you go in, then you got to set the arraignment date. So you got to drive all the way up there just so they can give you another date. Yeah, and you got to go all the way up there to decide guilty, not guilty. The, the act, and then you got to set pre-trial dates and trial dates. Like it just, it just goes forever. Right. Yeah. And uh, so the thing that almost bit me in the ass is my mantra. Basically, is anyone, anywhere, anytime. I was fighting at the time, and I would always fight. So their defense would always bring up pictures, and they'd bring up videos of me saying i'll fight anyone anywhere anytime and i had to explain them like yeah i that's my mantra in fighting that's not like my life yeah 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 right so did that guy know you were no he just knew he didn't know he just knew i had money because of the boat and the truck and the thing that we all pulled up in yeah he I, didn't know y'all were ufc fighters no 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 not at the time he just know we that lake doesn't really have boats on it that we bring like we brought like a half a million dollar boat to go you, pl play on the water. And he was just kind of like, what are these jumpy kids? Like, you know what I mean? Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. It's his lake. He kind of, if there's a lake here in Winnebago and you're on it all the time and you fish and somebody else shows up, you're kind of, I kind of get his side. And he was like, who are these little frat boy f coming up? You know what I mean? That was his attitude. Right. So he was just kind of big chest and kind of try to bully us all weekend. Um, Do you think that the crosswalk thing had something to do with it? No, because that's in Albuquerque, New Mexico. Oh, oh. Yeah, back you. home. 
training, going yeah. to Whole Foods to get lunch. It, it was really a coincidence. Oh, it was just the crazy. Yeah, yeah it was just. And, but I got you. The wife had to talk me off the ledge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just um, I didn't know if maybe you thought it was they were connected. Somehow. No, no. It was I, it was just you were asking me if that ever happens. I had to right. explain to you how. Yeah, during you could. Yeah. Dang. Let me try some of this sucker punch, super puncher. Should call it a sucker punch. Yeah. Old Sun Super Punch. Yeah, it's your lucky day. This is the new Mountain Ops flavor of Ignite. Brand new can right here. So this is going to get me fired up to go ride bulls? Yeah, we're about to get on another bull. Cowboy's been on seven. We're about to have the second session of uh, bull riding for the day. So it'll be under the Winnebago lights, the beaches of Winnebago. We're going to turn on the flip on the arena lights and uh, run them in. We're going to run in the buckers. Buckaroos. Um, how about you, Dale? You ever been in a fight? Yeah, me and a guy who I'm now buddies with in high school rolled around for about 45 seconds. And how tiring was that? Ah, uh, we were both pretty exhausted. Right. But uh, no, other than that, I haven't. No there, one. You don't ever have road rage incidents. No. You're out here in Texas. The have guns out here. Yeah, I don't really get too mad in traffic. I, d- I definitely oh, don't. In there. I definitely don't, you know, ask somebody to pull over, nor have I been asked to pull over. But <laughs> I don't know. I am training jujitsu right now right. just because, like, I don't know. You and I were talking about it at that Can Am deal in uh, August. The only thing, here it is, people. Old Sun Super Punch. The only thing I have going for me, I feel like, you know, I'm not in super bad shape. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm somewhat athletic, and I don't think I would quit easily. Like, I feel like I, I would probably have a lot of try, maybe more than the next guy. But other than that, zero formal training. And so, and then from that point forward, me personally, um, my motivation to get formal training is my long hair. Like, I feel like maybe they're dumb enough they don't think to grab it, but if they got any sense at all, I feel like get a handful of Dale Brisby's hair and go to work, right? Do you think they possibly would want to sell that hair afterwards? I mean, they could. Be worth something, huh? Yeah. Hopefully they, I mean, because if they come after me, all I really got is a couple of bucking horses and Boone. Mm Mm-hmm. But I would. The hair. But the hair. Yeah. I'd grab your hair. Don't you think? Yeah, for sure. I mean, would you think to? Uh, I, yeah, I would. I'd, I'd spin it in one hand and then just give you a whole room full of uppercuts with the other and just let, let you not go. That's nowhere. what I'm saying. Yeah. Would Would jujitsu help me avoid that? Uh, you're still gonna get your hair growed, but you're but you're gonna have to figure out how to. What's your next move on them? That's what I'm saying. Because before you just kind of be frozen, but now you're at least gonna know. I can do, do, yeah, I can do this, this, and this. Yeah, and that, that, and that. Maybe, I mean, maybe they would give me time to like put it up in a bun. (laughs) Hold that anger. (laughs) Spin it up under the cap. Put the cow. Would you spin it and spin it? Oh yeah, like in uh, over the top. Yeah, yeah, (laughs) and and be like. All right, All right now we're ready. Yeah. Because um, I think, I think, I'm going to ma- be honest with you. If you and I, let's just say, we're outside of Winnebago driving and I cut you off and you honk at me like, pull over. And I come running up to you and you nonchalantly throw your truck in park after you roll your window up, crack the door, put your car in park, step out. And I'm like, blah, 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 and you just kind of, Maybe put it on my lip. Give me a little shh. Sh- <laughs> spin your hair up. Throw it around in the over the top. And you're like, okay, sorry about that. Um, is there something I can help you with? Because <laughs> I'm fixing to whip the whole street ass on you. And I might be like, now nah, your tail light's out. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> this, guy, this guy might have some shit to him. Shit to him. <laughs> Anybody with that much confidence wearing a man bun, there may be something to it. Maybe I should leave him alone. 
you know? Yeah. So, take, so you're take saying. Take glasses off and, set, you know, just took your time yeah, and got yeah. ready. Yeah. Yeah. Like in the movies where they take their coat <laughs> sure. off and like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So you're saying like, whatever I do, do it with confidence. Cause maybe, all right, oh, mm-hmm. get this. I'm about to get down to business. I'm about to. Business. Almost like you're putting a, a, a napkin right here. You're ready to eat. Yeah. So that happened um, another time with Dustin Jones. We had a mud ride. Yeah. And one of my buddies gotten like a, like a skirmish. And again, the the group happened, right? And it was me, Dustin, and Quentin, a couple, like four or five of us. And these mud riders had like a bunch of them. Well, the conversation was happening between my, my buddy and one of their guys. It was literally about to happen. So I just went over to their biggest guy, calm, just like we're talking about right now. And I just said, hey. If you guys are this badass, like if you're fucking want to do this, and I just said it calm, let's just walk over here past the tree line and go get it done. Like, let's not do it in front of everyone. The cops are going to come here and everyone's like, because they park all the bikes around and put music on. It's like a party. Yeah. But I was like, if you guys are, we're down. There's five of us. We're 100% ready. But let's not make a deal. Like, let's just, if you guys, are, if that's who you are, yeah. Let's just walk 200 feet past the tree line and we can get down. Yeah. And it never, it ended up happening. And, and Dustin was like, what, what did you tell him? I just said, I just said, we we're ready. Like, <laughs> but I guess I just said it in a manner that maybe frightened him because I was so calm and collected about it. I, but I was like, yeah, if you guys really, if you want to go get down, we, we ain't got to make a scene. We don't got to yell. We ain't got to tell nobody. You, you guys can all hold hands. So you make sure you got every one of you and you and walk over there and we'll come right behind you. Right. Yeah. And we'll, we can figure it out. And they, they didn't want to do it. They wanted to make... That's what most tough guys are. They, they want to make a scene anyway, so... I don't know. I don't have much desire to get in one. Maybe if I've had formal training, I will. Yeah, but even now with the formal training that you're doing, you're learning jujitsu, so you're, you'll are you be able to use the skills to restrict them from doing any harm to you. Uh-huh. Necessarily, you're not going to go in there and break their arm, but you're definitely going to be able to tie them up enough where you're like, hey... Are you, enough? Yeah. Enough? And they'll be like, yeah, 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 yeah sorry. Or if they're like, eh, pff, spit on you, then you put them in a choke, and you're like, eh, night, night. Yeah. Right? Whisper some medieval shit in their ear, like things you've always wanted to say to somebody, you can just say it when you have them, just, yeah. yeah. Whatever you want to say, you can say it to them. Your time is up. Your time is up. <laughs> give, them a, give them a little ear lick, maybe a suck. Clean up on aisle five. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, whatever. We yeah, have once you. Yeah, yeah. Once I'm gonna. You, yeah, your dog. Yeah, whenever exactly. Whenever, whenever. Right I'll before they go. Right some. before they go out, let them know they're gonna wake up with a sore ass. Yeah, <laughs> it's about to go down. <laughs> your mother and I are gonna talk about this tonight. <laughs> Pillow talk. So, but it usually, I it would never come to that. I think if someone ever wanted. to get wild with you and it happened you could just take them down with the little bit of knowledge you're learning here soon you'll be able to do you feel like you just knowing like my situation like and what i'm going for i'm not trying to necessarily end up in the octagon yeah is jujitsu the the best thing for me to learn right now yeah and then you'll and then you're gonna enjoy it so much you're gonna learn wrestling just because you're gonna want to be better at jujitsu and then you're gonna learn striking just because it's fun Right, but jujitsu for sure is what I would tell someone like you to learn. If you were coming into fighting and wanting to become a fighter, we'd need to do all of them, and we'd need to work on all of them now. Like we need to start, but right now, stylistically, you just learn jujitsu, and you're just gonna love it because you'll be able to. You'll see, because you're right now the guy that doesn't know anything, Mm -hmm. but you've had ten classes, so you know more than the guy that knows zero. Yeah, pretty soon you're gonna have a hundred classes. You're gonna be a blue belt. The idiot at the bar knows nothing. Or the idiot yelling at you at Whole Foods knows nothing. So you'll be able to like grab them up so easily. Because humans have like traits. Mm-hmm. Right? Like the the roll to your belly, not in the face, not in the face uh mentality. Everyone wants to do that. That's why you see fighters when they start getting their ass whooped, they just give their back and turtle up. Like that's the that's the no more. Mm-hmm. Well, there's a million things you'll be able to do that if you wanted to just field goals kick through the uprights you could or if you want to choke him out and whisper sweet nothings in his ear that's your time yeah but you'll be able to put him in those positions easy easy if i was gonna be 
get in a fight with a professional fighter May 18th, and right now it's beginning of February, what would I need to be doing for that short of time? Like, what would you work with me, work with on with me first? Crisping up your striking because that's where you're going to start. Uh huh. Right. No matter what we do, red corner, blue corner, you're starting on your feet. Yeah. Whether your plan is to shoot and take him down or his plan is to shoot and take you down, we know the fight is starting there. Yeah. So then I would just figure out what does Dale Brisby want to do? Yeah. Do you want to continue to stay and strike or is jujitsu your thing? So in that, we're going to be like, okay, we're going to need to work on defensive wrestling or we're going to need to work on offensive wrestling. And we're going to need to drill that, drill that, drill that, and just get it to the point where you're comfortable in those p- shitty positions. Yeah. So, but I know for a fact, every round we start back standing. Right. No matter what. There's no no case where they're going to be like, oh, let's start them back on the ground. Nope. You start standing. You ready? You ready? Okay, let's go. Boom. Both standing. So, if it's jujitsu you want, we're going to need to figure out how we're going to get Dale to take the kid to the ground, or maybe he wants to take you to the ground and we're going to play off that. But if we had five months to work, I would work on crisping up your striking, working. If you don't want to kick, that's fine with me, but I'll work on some kind of standing combination, being able to punch laterally and backwards. Mm -hmm. So if we're negating, we can still throw with power. Yeah. Right. And um, I'd work on just, just fundamentals, super fundamentals, one, two, threes, one, twos of getting you striking and then i would work heavily on the other side you want if if, if going to the ground and jujitsu is none in your wheelhouse we would work on how do we get back to our feet yeah whether that be in wrestling not allowing the takedown so we'd work a lot of wrestling defense let's say we didn't have enough time to work on all the defense they still you had a d1 wrestler he smashed you on the ground now from mount side mount half guard all the positions we're learning how do we go from mount to guard back to our feet how do we go from side mount back up? How do we endanger him enough, put him in threat of a submission that we can escape and get to our feet? So that's what I would work in the short amount of time that we'd have to get you ready for the fight. And I would have to have you in the mental capacity of that also. So how would I create the mental capacity for you is I would bring in, just like you're doing with me with the Bulls, I'd bring in guys that I know you can hang with. Mm-hmm. And then I would sprinkle in a guy or two that's going to crush you back. Yep. And then I'm going to, now you're you're beating those guys, and we're going to go harder to guys that crush you back. Guys that crush you back. But then we're going to sprinkle in the easy guys again so your confidence gets up. So every night you're not going home with your head down in the shower just like this. For sure. For There's sure. got to be a couple of days in there when you're like calling your friend, cool, I caught him today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Got to have that. I got to have that. And then I got to talk with you about the Dale. We're only going to be able to control the things that you can control, right? I can't control the weather. I can't control his attitude. I can't control the sparring partners, how hard they're going to hit you. I can just control the attitude at which you step into every one of these days. And at the end of these days, no matter what happened, we're going to take a shower. We're going to wash all that shit down the drain. And tomorrow's a new day. Yeah. I don't care how bad yesterday was. Tomorrow's a new day. And we're looking at it as a new day, right? Think about it as, May 18th, we'll use my bull riding as an example. I like to think of it as a vehicle has headlights and we can only see 200 feet in front of us. But when we make it to those 200 feet, now we got another 200 feet we can see. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. So we're slowly, incrementally going to pursue our goal in 200, controlling what we can control increments at a time. Yeah. Right? And I'm also going to talk to you about red light and green light thoughts. I don't want you in your mind going in, watching video on the guy you're about to fight, thinking, oh, he hits with the right hand. What's he going to do? Those are red light thoughts. I need you to switch those into green light thoughts. And he might do that, but I'm going to do this, right? I need your mindset positive the whole time. I can't have you in the red zone where you're always doubting yourself and thinking against yourself. So we're going to switch that to all positive thinking. And some of those days, you're going to have those bad days. And those are days I'm going to say, you know what, Dale, today's, let's, let's, it's, this isn't the day. Go home, refresh. Right. Tomorrow's a new day. We're going to start over. Yeah. Show up tomorrow and it's a whole new day. You're sore, you're tired. How tired? Are you hurt or are you injured? Exactly. Right? Let's yeah. figure this out. We have five months. Five months minus fight week, minus this, minus days you got to travel. Okay, we have 42 days to get this done. How can we best make these 42 days work? 
And that's how I would attack it. So, I mean, yeah. that's that's golden, man. That's just, that's exactly what, are you hurt or are you injured? You know, like, and they asked me today, are you scared of Cowboy going, uh, I mean, like, has he been on too many? Or are you scared of him pushing too hard? And seeing you hit the ground yesterday off of that black bull, I think it was your, maybe your second or third bull, you right. hit the ground pretty hard. Like, I feel it. I know that. If you've been in rodeo, you can feel that. <gasps> It was the uh, the semi truck downshifting. It was one of those. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Cool. <laughs> so like that's pain. You're not injured. That's hurt. When you get home, a couple days go by. It's gonna be gone. Correct. You know and the so, memory won't. The memories will not. So I know it's something. All right, we're gonna push through. We still need to ride. Just like today, you know, you said that particular uh, pain didn't affect your rides because nope. you had gotten frustrated with yourself and you nope. just pushed through it. Yeah. Now. Your uh, your groin and your wrists; those are a little different because right. those are existing injuries. Correct. And so, but going back to like the 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 red light, green light, like <clears throat> one thing with us, and I'm sure it's similar in fighting. Like these animals do not care, nor they do, do they know they're going to do their deal. And you have a list of fundamentals that have to be implemented. You got to go to the front on your bull. And when the gate opens, that animal is going to do his deal. Yep. And if any of those, what you're calling red light thoughts come in, all it's doing is distracting you from the game plan. Yes. And so you're, you have to be in fight mode as you move forward through these fundamentals. Otherwise, just the slightest little second and it can be over. Okay. So, hey, cowboy, how do I have red light thoughts? I can't figure out how to get these out of my head. What do you do? Yes. And I say you fake it. Till you make it. Really? That's with anything. I'm going to fake it that I'm the greatest bull rider. I'm going to walk tall. I'm going to fake it. Am I scared to death? Yeah, I'm scared, but I'm going to fake it like I'm not. Because if you fake it long enough, sometimes you find it. Yeah. Right? So that's my plan. I'm going to just fake it till I make it. Well, there, and then there's also some reinforcement, especially when you have time that you can like, you can prepare. So yeah. you don't just fake it. Right. Yeah, I mean, which I know that's not what you're saying, but like you are actively so winning builds confidence is of one course. thing somebody in rodeo taught me. And so like if you don't have a rodeo to go to and winning builds confidence in your in your it's like a proven fact that when you win, you now win more. Yes. Like just because the winning attitude, oh yeah, for sure it's proven. So if you're not actively going to rodeos, you need to create ways in which you can win. Correct. And one way to do that is to train and prepare. And if you do that through out the butt and just over and over and over, you you can give yourself a level of confidence going into that. And that's what you're doing with this bull rod. Correct. Um, I love how you said there's just some days you don't have, you know, because there are some days that guys, we, we practice a lot here yeah. on the beaches. And so they'll have, there'll be some days when guys show up. The other thing is. Call it grind in second gear. You just can't find it. Yeah. Man, and in the practice crazy. pen, it's sometimes like maybe in the in the gym, like there's no music, there's no people, there's no vibe, you know, and so it's hard to get it going. And there's days where it's just like, guys, let's not get on a third animal today. Mm -hmm. Like take a break. We'll come back tomorrow. We got time. Yep. Um, I can't you can't make a habit out of that. No. But I bet there's days like that in the gym where I mean, there's days that you can't f up. You are untouchable. The flow state, we call it. Yeah. Oh, it's incredible. It's the best best feeling ever. When you, when I used to fight and I would enter the flow state, it would almost be like I would be third person playing myself with a video game. Like, like it was so cool. Yeah. The feeling is the most amazing thing. And if I could ever harness that and figure out, that's what I was always chasing. How do I bottle that up? What did I do throughout the day? To where I got to that. Was there ever a time when you're in the flow state and then it just didn't work out? No. Every time I was ever in the flow state were some of the best fights I've ever had. Really? Yeah. Just incredible. Like I felt like I could just do anything. Make shit up. Overhand, flying elbow. What that worked? Come on. You know what I mean? Like crazy. Yeah. yeah wild things. And what what what's what's one that a fight that stands out in your mind where you were in? Oh, well, Rick Story, the, the greatest combination ever. The one yeah. where I slipped down, hit, boom, boom, head kick. Yeah, yeah bro. I mean, that was just like like a video game. And uh, same thing. My very first fight coming into 170 pounds, I fought. Um, oh man, it sucks. I can't remember his name now. I feel bad. Patrick Cote. Yeah. So, 
You're fine. That, that that's the other one you can think of. Who yeah, is that, who is the first one? Patrick Cote. But who is the first flow state kind of? Oh, fight Rick Story. Talking? Rick Story, and then Patrick. Patrick Cote. I, I fought at 170 pounds. My very first fight, going up weight. Yeah. At the time, Patrick was beating everyone's ass, and I I remember third round, I could do whatever I wanted. Dang. I remember one time I hit him with like three or four right hands in a row, like boop, boop, boop. Boop, and I'm like, come on, there's no way this is working. Like, I was just like, anything I could think of combination wise, I was just doing it and moving. And those are just two of the. And that whole day, I felt so bad. But how it turned on, I don't know. Like physically? Just, yeah, physically, mentally. Like, I was like, Ugh. I just couldn't find, just didn't want to be there. Checked out. Like, it's really weird how. You talked about today how bull riding and and or riding the rank stock is ninety percent physical, ninety percent mental. Oh, you said mental. I thought you said physical. So that's how I feel too. I I think fighting during camp is definitely eighty percent physical, twenty percent mental. Really, fight week it switches, and now it's eighty percent mental and twenty yeah. percent physical. You're not doing anything at all. You're just kind of going through the cutting the weight and going through the five days and just waiting for everything to happen until that day, Saturday. And on that Saturday, whenever you're training, that's another thing we'd be, work, we'd be working on on your fight camp is how do we beat this guy on your worst day? Because that's yeah. what we need. Yeah. We need to know if you're sick, you're tired, your knee hurts, we need to beat this guy on your worst day. So that's what we need to train for. Yeah. Because when we show up on Saturday... Dale Brisby might not yeah. be 100% right. mentally. Yeah. You might be something wrong, something you can't find it. You're just not feeling it. It's so wild how powerful your mind is, right? So those red light thoughts you were having all night, which happens because MMA is probably the only sport in the world where you go to bed thinking about another man. How crazy is that? Let me say that again. Yeah. Lay in bed at night next to a beautiful girl and you think about another man. Yeah. And what he's going to do to you. How fucked up is that? Yeah. So those thoughts get deeper and deeper as you go. Well, the night before the fight is you're a wreck. Not only do you have however far into your career you are, and the fan base you've created. But all along that month leading to that fight, I've met the lady at the grocery store. Maybe I came down here to Winnebago and I've met all the interns. Maybe they weren't my fans, but now they are, right? Oh, I like Calway. He's a pretty cool dude. Maybe Cole and Donnie, in their mind, I've already won the fight. Yeah. Yeah, we're going, we're going to Las Vegas to watch Calway whip this dude's ass. It's already in their mind. So you have that pressure. You have the pressure of all of the millions of people watching you on TV. Yeah. Maybe that doesn't bother you, Dale. I don't know. But maybe grandma does. Maybe your sister do, right? Like maybe the, the key people amongst that bother you performing well in front of. Yeah. And Bobby Steiner... <laughs> The reason I fell in love with that family and, and the mindset of him is I talked to him about this when we were out barefoot one day and he tells me, pick one guy, one person, Cowboy. When you go to the next arena, I want you to stand there. I want you to look out amongst the thousands of people and I want you to pick one person. I want you to go compete. And after you're done competing, whatever it is, whether it's fight, like he was, you know, just telling me to compete. I want you to look at that person, and if you satisfied that person that you knew nothing about, you did a good job. Yeah. So the second half of my career, I'd always find somebody. All right, that little kid next to the lady in the red jacket. Got it. And after the fight, when they were cheering and hooting and hawing, I'm like, yeah. Yeah. I got it. That's cool. Cool. So it helped eliminate the worry of letting your friends and family down because that's a – Heavy is the head who wears the crown, for sure. Right. Oh, man. Carrying that disapproval is tough. And fighting is such a 
win or lose game. There's no in between. There's not like it's not like you can go compete again later that day or yeah. It's like months later. And so you're only as good as your last ass whipping. Yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately. And just it just sucks, man. Having that like as supportive as you guys would all be. Like, oh man, it's okay. How much cooler would it have been if it wasn't okay and we knocked him out and now yeah. we're fucking high five and that's that's when it's cool. Right. The highest highs and the lowest lows. And you know, just the misconception I think people have of how much stress to me that was that was the hardest part is dealing with the stress. And when I started the stress started outweighing the amount of fun I was having is when I knew it was time for me to call it off like man i'm not i'm not enjoying this anymore it's too it's too stressful for me like what stressful what are you talking about you go out there and fight like no the whole months and weeks leading up to this and that saturday oh my god it uh it's brutal it's the hardest day you could ever imagine that night's tough and then you're just sitting around all day yeah waiting and i usually fought later on the crowd main event cool main event like you know towards the end of the fight so Nine ten o'clock at night, we're fighting. Damn, bro, you're sitting there like all day. Like, what do you do? What do you eat? What do you think about? I'd always try to go do something and go see my friends and family, you know. And then I got to the part where I didn't want to see my friends and family anymore. I wanted to just, I didn't know. It's crazy, yeah. bro. It's wild, nuts. And you got to be careful going to see your friends and family because they're energy vampires sometimes, right? And they just want to, they they don't mean to be, right. Like if I, for instance, if you came and you brought all the interns, I would want to see you guys and you guys wouldn't even realize you were doing it, but you want to take a picture, talk to me, how's my week going? How's everything going? But you're, it's, you know what I mean? You're one of the many people that are, are pulling you in yeah. different directions. Yeah. It's like, it finally got to the if point 83 where 83 people do that that day. Yeah. It's tough. It's like, whew, man, okay. Go. You know, and sometimes like Lindsay, my wife was really good about, we'd always have a big group dinner. She was really good about like, okay, guys, we're out of here. You know what I mean? And I was like, oh, why? And she'd be like, come on, it's time. Right? She was always real good at knowing when to like being the bad guy. Yeah, it's to time be. to get in. Or you would text her because I'd always turn my phone off, and she'd be like, yeah, Dale, it's not a good time. You know what I mean? She was yeah. really good at that, and she could read me, and she knew who you were to me. So, or she might be like, oh yeah, Dale, come. Now would be a good time. Yeah, that's cool. Right, come on, come. He's just laying down in the back, you know, go. Because you need that energy, obviously, yeah. because you're fighting. Yeah, because I can, I can think of, like, being at a booth, and whenever I have a booth, if I'm going to go there, I'll be there for, you know, it might be seven or eight yeah. hours that I'll be at the booth, and I've told some of the guys that when I go to the four sixes and day work, I could be there all day, working all day. And at the end of the day, I have way more energy, yeah. way more than an eight-hour booth sure, or a six-hour booth. It's just for some reason it drains the snot out of me. Now, at the end of my booth, I don't have to fight anybody. Right. <laughs> so, And that's my job, and I but enjoy you, doing it. But, but no, I, I can relate. I can, I can see what you mean by the But you energy. did have little fights all day long. Yeah. What I mean by that is maybe you are done smiling. And being happy, but you have to fake it till you make it. Yeah. Hey, Dale, can I push? Of course you can. Cheese. Yeah. Right. It might not be the day for you. You might be feeling sick. You might not want to be there. But you're you're because all it takes is one or two people to be like that Dale. That dude, and it happens. Like yeah, sometimes, of course. like especially in Vegas, I'm so tired, Lord. and I want to be there. Of course, I want to take a picture with yeah. you. Yeah. But I'm not quite as energetic as I am in the videos, and so they're let down. Yeah. You know, and I get it. They want the the Dale that they watch. I get that. But they, they maybe have just caught me in a moment where I've been in the booth for six hours, and, and now th there are people like... I get it. Yeah. I 100% get it. So. But but it's not that... Yeah, I want to take the picture. Of course I do. Yeah. You know? Uh, and anyhow, I... Uh, yeah, you've done that a lot more than I have. But um, those... those uh, I, I just know what you mean. Like, it, it's it's work. And it's a different kind of work that's taxing on you mentally. But uh, regardless. You got to have the fundamentals of the strong people around you, right? The people that are there helping Dale succeed and not just there for themselves, right? And what I mean by that, like my corners and my coaches and all the people that are with me 
but mainly my wife. Like, especially my last couple of fights, I'd always like be down, like, man, God. And she would always like check me. Yeah. Because she's my wife. So she can talk to me however she wants to talk to me. And she'd be like, hey, poor you. What are you talking about? You're going to do what you love. You get every day, you get to get up yeah. and do what you love. First world probs. You don't have to go sit in a booth, answer calls, people on ATT trying to sell them a phone. Right? Right. You get to do what you love every single day. And then she played um, D1 soccer and a super athlete. So she would always tell me when I'm like bitching and complaining and not sure what to do, she would always be like, just think if I could lace him up for one more game, it'd be my best game I could ever play because I knew. Right? This is at the end of my career. She'd be like, go out there and have fun and do, do this for you for once. Like, go enjoy it. Go have fun because... There's going to be a day when you're sitting there and you're not going to be able to do it again and you're going to wish I could go back to that day that I hung it out to dry. And to me, that day is the Conor McGregor fight. I threw it away before I even ever walked out that door. I never... You want to talk about quitting before I even got to the arena? Yeah. He gave me an exit and I took it. Like, I just... I was so... Never wanted to be there. It was cr- the craziest thing. Like, Dang. all I wanted was a big fight. In the, like, when you're a kid, that's what you want. The big lights, the camera. Home. The last place I wanted to be is in that arena that night. It's so wild. Yeah. Like, and I have to live with that every single day now. The decisions I made, you know. And I had a couple fights after that. And i just glad I stepped away from the game. And people are always like, oh, are you going to come back? And I don't think I will. I don't. Yeah. Yeah, I don't. I don't know. You were asking me. I had another company at reach out. I don't. I don't know, Dale. I just right now I'm a bull rider. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> so I don't. He was. He seems pretty classy about it. Connor. Yeah. Yeah. But everyone always thought he was just going to be on there and talking a bunch of shit. But I never really left anywhere. My whole career of what you would talk badly about me about. Yeah. How's he going to, what's he going to say? <laughs> yeah. So I never, you know what I mean? I didn't, I didn't really, I, I, I am kind of what I, what you see is what you get kind of. I didn't really yeah. ever put on a fake persona or do make, this or, you know, make I, fun of his wife or something. Yeah. I mean, I, we had one press conference and I'm like, dude, we can just fight right now. Like I, that ain't going to fly, you know? And he's like, nah, I, I, Let's go. He was totally respectful for me all from day one. Never once was he ever out of line. Yeah. And kudos to Connor, man. What a what a good dude and what a way to make a name for yourself. That's what I'm talking about. The well oiled machine, he deserves a hundred million dollars. Yeah. He went out there and did that. Right? Yeah. Good for you. So Yeah. Yeah. Everyone thinks I got super paid on that. Did not. Right. Uh, yeah, you're contracted. You have a contract. That's what it is. Right? Yeah. You're contracted to feed someone's bowl. And you have a deal, like whatever. Like JB was telling me, he gets X amount of dollars every day to feed someone's bull, take care of them, teach them the buck. Well, if Twisted Steel comes in there, he still gets that same amount of money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He doesn't be like, ooh, that's Dana White's bull. Nah, eight times the price. For sure. no, you're, I'm just saying, like, let's say him and Dana had a contract. Yeah, yeah. He makes $25 a day to take care of these bulls and buck them. Just because a superstar, just because Bodacious shows up, he can't be like, ah. That's fifty dollars a day. Right. Well, same thing in the contract. You're contracted for X amount of fights. I would always sign, which is unheard of, eight fight deals. Most people do one, two, three, but I knew I wanted to fight eight times a year. So an eight fight deal for me was a year or half a year. You know what I mean? Like yeah. so I'd always do eight fight deals. I'm locked into that. It's not yeah. like three fights in, I can be like, Tom to renegotiate. Yeah, because I'm fighting Connor. Yeah, because I'm fighting Connor. No. Uh, you still have four more fights on your contract. This is what you're getting paid. So everyone's like, red panty night, you got paid. No, I didn't. Yeah. I paid what I always got paid, which is good. Yeah. I ain't complaining. I'm not making shit up saying, Danny, he owes me money. No, I, I made great money. Yeah. So, um, but you had that. So you, 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 you agreed to the eight fight deal. Mm hmm. And then they call you along the way. Just like and anything. They, and they, it's anytime, anywhere. So when they called you about Connor, you're like, hell yeah. Hell yeah, let's go. That's so of badass. Right? Of course. I And I didn't call like, ooh, I'll only fight Connor if. Right. No. Let's go. That's so badass. Let's do it. You know? So 
in my career, I made $10 million. I'm good. Yeah. You know, I don't live crazy. I don't buy crazy. I mean, this new truck. You are a penny pinching son of a bitch. <laughs> you act like you got no money. Yeah. That's how I have money. <laughs> right? Full. The last two tanks of gas that we that you had to fill up with when I was with you, I paid for. <laughs> Dale, I'm giving you a ride. Cowboy, it's your truck. My car won't work. <laughs> And that's why I'm going to have gas later. Yeah. Had I known you got a diesel tank out back, I might start driving down here and filling up my extra tank. <laughs> Dale, you don't mind if I just go you ahead and uh, get the gas yeah. right home. But you, you, you are frugal. Yes. You know, being around you, I have observed that, you know, having made 10 million in however many years, like right. it doesn't show, which is cool. Yeah. I mean, I, it's my wife and friends always make fun of me. Like we go to the races and I had like a pair of super holy Carhartt jeans on and busted out boots. And they're like, dude, you're the richest person we know and you dress like a bum. I'm like, yeah, but it's comfortable. I don't, yeah. I don't care. I don't you know. get them in tractor supply. They get them in- <laughs> <laughs> I got the tractor supply. Uh, what what are these are on right now? Ridge something. Yeah, exactly. something. I remember <laughs> this, some tractor supply. Oh, yeah, that's right. We was on the Can-Am deal. And I had to yeah. go buy a new pair of jeans. Yeah, yeah I said, yeah. tractor supply opens at six. Let's go yeah. swing by. <laughs> yeah, that, I mean, I, I didn't expect them to be designer jeans, right. but I was just like, those are like 28 bucks. Yeah, it's perfect. I can get three of them for the price of one. I could get, I'll get you some rock and roll. Dinner. There you go. All right. <laughs> and they free, so let's go. <laughs> yeah, you would do it because they're yeah. free. Come on. Shout out, shout out to Rock and Roll Denim Cowboy. Loves your pants. <laughs> <laughs> what size do you wear? 30. Something. I'm a 34, 32. Okay. Yeah. Now I used to be thirty two, thirty two, but um, since I've been pumping up the steroid action, I put on a little weight. Like I'm two hundred six right now. I've never been that my whole life. Are you like lifting though? Uh, uh-uh. I just I'm on steroids, so I just look at weights and I get big. <laughs> yeah, what's that company? Transcend. Transcend. Yeah, yeah. You were telling me about it. And what, I'm not what? right now. I'm not on. I'm not on any like everyone thinks like oh you're on a bunch of anabolic. Ste-. No, I'm not on the only like actual steroid I'm on is. TRT and what's testosterone. that testosterone so which is stuff that you can get like at Walgreens even theirs is probably just better yeah theirs is definitely better and it um but I'm saying it's not like something illegal it has to be prescribed by a doctor so gotcha yeah it would technically getting it from someone in the back door of Walmart would be illegal but at a Walgreens gotcha. yeah but um TRT and I I take they call it the wolverine package it's basically tb500 uh ibg and bbc 157 they're like three peptides mm-hmm. that help with everything man. yeah Just, rogan talks about peptides a lot what is that i don't know what a peptide is i wish i could i wish i was more familiar they're like take this and i'm like yeah boop so it but what i know it? i know the um testimoralin is a peptide that triggers your pituitary gland to create natural growth hormone and testosterone. Okay. So I know that it, whatever the peptide is, it maybe it tricks your body to think that you have an influx of something and it needs to create more. I think. Yeah. Gotcha. I gotcha. wish I knew I, I'm talking yeah. totally. Retarded. But what does it make you feel like? Like I'm 18. Really? Oh my God. Well, so last night, I took that hard fall on my back. Yeah. Groin's blown out. I went in there and took those Wolverine things. Basically, it just sends blood flow and makes like red blood cells and makes everything to the body where you're injured. And my wrists are gone and my groin's gone. So I'm already taking a call trans that says, hey, I'm going to bull ride. A couple things I need to fix. Yeah. And um, they said, okay, let's get you set up on this. They also got me set up on this thing called a, uh, NAT, don't know what it stands for, but it's for your brain. Yeah. It helps with like blunt trauma and re- I think it helps reconnect synapses in your brain for, I feel super good now that I've been taking that. And I would not just around here talking about this, but I would tell you like, yeah, that shit don't work. Yeah, I mean, for like, sure. Yeah, no, I know that about you. I don't <laughs> give, I would never stand by a company that, um, I don't use or that's just who I am. Yeah, for sure. So if someone sends me something and it's Fugazi, I'm like, nah, that ain't really, thank you, but I, I wouldn't pump that. So 
when I, um, those are two things I said I'm going to do. I'm going to go get my hair done in Turkey and I'm going to get on steroids. Well, look at these flowing locks, baby. Whoop, yeah. Whoop. And uh, the steroids and all the BBC and all the things I mentioned pl- help the lifting side also. And so does testosterone. Like your body just, when I quit fighting, my levels were pretty high already. Like I didn't need it, but I wanted it because I wanted to feel young. Man, you just, your healing, your memory, your, you feel like you're 18 again. Literally, like I used to, like, died out, there was a point in my life where I had to warm up just to get out of bed. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. let's go, let's start the day. I'm all old like the tin man. I feel great now. Wake yeah. up, I feel younger. My skin looking better. My nails are growing. Like, literally, it's the fountain of youth. Literally. Yeah. Dang. Oh, it's incredible. And I've been talking to you about it on the phone, you know, you're, you seem like one of those guys that has to see it to believe it and uh, or have somebody else see somebody else do it before you do it. Dustin Jones is a lot like that too. But I think just over the years with your injuries, with injuries, yeah. just the BPC, just that peptide alone, and you'll feel so much better. Yeah, me and Donnie were talking about trying it. You guys need to, I need to, I mean... I, I told you several times I introduced you to the company. They'll, they'll glad to help you. But you all, how old are you? 37? Six. 36. You should. So here's the other thing about this company that I'm trying not to sell, but apparently now I'm selling you on it. Uh, it's not like you call me like, hey, I want this, this, and this. Cowboy was talking about it. How do I get that shit? And they're like, oh, sick, Donnie. I'm glad that's what you want. Let's go get your blood work done. Let's check your levels and see what you need. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? It's not that they're like, oh, you want this? There you go. So they're going to check your level, see where your testosterone is. And be like, hey, Dale, here's the scale. Here's where Cowboy wants to be up in the 900, 1200 area, the superhuman 800, 600. These are all good. You're 500. So we can give you a little bit and bring you up to there, or we can bring you up to wherever you want, or you don't technically need it right now. So let's hold off on that. And But, but what we can give you these other things to help with, Maybe you've taken a bunch of hits or maybe your spine, you know, how yeah. do we give you some healing things? Yeah. Or or you're telling them I'm on a carnivore diet and I just want to look a little bit better. All right, well, here's some things that we can help assist you in those departments. Yeah. doesn't have, It's not like you're trying to be a bodybuilder and want to put on 80 pounds. Like, oh, sure. here's, here's some anabolic shit. They yeah, have no. that too. Yeah. Yeah, that don't really... I mean, in rodeo, like, we want to be pretty lean. Yeah, lean yeah. mean. Yeah. I mean, like, there's not really any weight requirements, but, like, you're trying to, like, get out over a bull. You're trying to... And, and so, like, if you can handle your own body weight, Correct. you know, that's great, you know. The main thing I think that would be helpful for rodeo cowboys like myself and Donnie is just recovering from injuries. Yeah. You know? Yeah. You know, like, coming back from something being in really good shape to avoid injuries, stuff like that. And that's why prior to coming here, I called them. Hey, this is what I'm going to do. How do we fix any of these pre-existing injuries? How do I... Can I also have something that's going to help, not overnight put on mass, but help something assist in the building of muscle so I can start strengthening the areas that I think I need strengthened, right? Yeah. They're like done. And uh, so that's what I'm on right now, the Wolverine superhuman mixture. And I feel great. Rogan's your boy? Yeah, he's my boy. When did you see him last? Uh, the last UFC I was at, I saw him. Yeah. We but I called and talked to him about you. And uh, he, he's my boy, man. Did you talk to him before he asked me to go on? Yeah. Did you yeah, really? Yeah, yeah. No, you didn't. Yeah, I did. Once you told me you were going on Rogan, yeah. Oh, oh, you talked to him after he asked me. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, not not like I told him you. No, you yeah, told yeah. me you're going on Rogan. I was like, oh shit. So I just talked yeah, to him. Yeah. Yeah. Um he was he's cool. cool. Great dude, and he's so influential, man. It's crazy how people what he says is gospel. Yeah. Right? Well, I think his his intentions are pure in trying yeah. to get to the tr- the bottom of the the, the, the truth. So even if you do disagree with what he's saying, like it's not like he's not trying to lead anybody astray. He doesn't have an agenda. Right. No but, way. Maybe he does, but it's his own agenda. I think to find out, get to the bottom of, he's not a puppet. That's no, 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 sure. for sure. And I, what I mean, what I mean by agenda, I bet he has like, let's just talk about the pyramids. I'm sure he's like, 
he has a lot of questions. So I think in his mind, he's like, well, let me bring on so, 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 and so, because they're experts in this area. Don't really care about my listeners. They're going to listen to it anyways, but I'm bringing these guests on because I. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? No, That's I, what I mean, that, yeah. for sure. <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I'm thoroughly interested in this aerospace program. So let's bring on that guy, right? And he, yeah. he picks their brain and, and he's very knowledgeable, man. The amount of intelligent questions he asks, I'm always like, oh, that was a good question. Yeah, I was gonna. Be, I was nervous that, you know, he was gonna be asking me some UFC stuff, and uh, you're just but, gonna go, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, yeah, yeah. That, was, that was great. But but of course, I mean, like obviously, like I'm wearing a cowboy hat on there, and like, that's why he asked me on there, right. you know, to be the resident cowboy, which was cool to be for him. Sure. But anyway, yeah, good dude. You going on again sometime? You think? I bet he has you on at some point. Probably. I've been on three times. Um, so yeah, I'm sure one day. We'll go. Maybe after I make it big in Hollywood. Well, I'll talk to him for you. Not pretty, you put in a oh you put in a word for me? I'll put in a good word that'd for be, you. That'd be awfully nice. <clears throat> it really catapult my career of doing nothing right now. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing next? Movies, I know. Movies. Um I have this a little bull ride I gotta go do here pretty soon. Yeah, that's eating up a lot of your time. Eating You're, a lot of time right can now. Can am racing. Can am racing, truck racing, bug racing. Um just living life wild and crazy still. Where can we get the uh, BMF Ranch merch? BMFRanch.com. My jerky. You got jerky. You got some badass underwear. Yes, I do. It's, Dude. And I don't really push those or, or try and sell them because I, I just... Tell, the reason I, I make socks also, and they're badass socks. I got a pair on right now. See these badass socks? BMF Dude, socks. If they're anything like long. these underwear. Oh, bro. Well, I... So that's... I never understood why my grandpa, when we were young, for Christmas, he'd always ask for uh, underwear and socks for Christmas for every year. And I was like, why? Well, then I became a dad, and I was always like, man, I do want underwear and socks. Now I get it. So I just created my own. And I gave you a couple pairs of underwear. I said, Dale, not to be weird, but once you put these underwear on, you're never going to want to switch out of them. And then I saw you the other day, and I was like, I told you. I told you you are going to like them. And I washed them that night because we were in the, you know, back there, steam room sauna deal. And I swapped them out. I got them on again. <laughs> because, like, well, I'm going to, when I get home, I'm going to send you a nice little, I'll get Donnie. Donnie, what size underwear? Are you medium? Yeah, I got you. Yeah, I'm not trying to be weird, but I was like, you were right on the money. And I, they're just like, they fit, but they're not, they don't annoy me during the day. Yeah. Like two t- anyway, whatever. So the other cool thing I got going on, we talked about the jerky I raised buffalo. Um, all subs. We're in Texas. We see all the all subs here. Right. Yeah. They uh, supported us at kids camp. And I just kind of, when I was doing all the kids camps, I kind of just underhanded the question to him. Like, Hey, how do I like get my jerky in your stores? Yeah. They're like, just send us some samples. We'd love to try it. So I sent them, I went in there and got a big box and put 20 flavors in there and sent it off. And they called me like, this is amazing. Dude, your jerky is bad to the bone. We love the packaging. The like, you're in. I'm like, what do you mean I'm in? I'm like, yeah. I, I said it's that easy. They're like, oh yeah. So we just call the distributors and we tell them we want to carry your product. You have to p- now pass the guidelines for each distributor, right? Mm-hmm. So we had to go through. So anyways, long story short, we got about 800 gas stations that the jerky's going in. Dang, it's cool. Yeah, that's so cool. That. Yeah, so that's uh. That's a lot maybe, of gas station. Maybe it's a lot of gas station. Maybe we'll get some. Uh, Here at Jerry's in Winnebago. Yeah, Winnebago's, you know. <laughs> this all hanging on the wall. This episode is brought to you by BMF Buffalo Jerky. BMF Ranch <laughs> Buffalo Jerky. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, I'll support it for you. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. Shoot, yeah. Well, BMFRanch.com. Check it out. Get some underwear. Get some jerky. Get some t shirts. Um, I'm Dale Brisby. And uh, this has been Cowboy Cerrone. We're literally about to go buck another bull. So watch out for the videos coming soon there. And watch out for May 18th where he's getting on Twisted Steel in uh, about three and a half months, four and a half months, something there. And we got four and a half months. So they might not know the difference between Twisted Steel. I might be looking like Twisted Steel. You know what I mean? I might just be. they. they, Is that Twisted Steel riding Twisted Steel? Oh, son. Damn. (laughs) <laughs> You're going to be ready. We're going to get you ready. I'm Dale right. Brisby, and we're on to the next one, Old Son.